Welcome back to the video, and in today's video, we are ranking every single wide receiver number one on every single NFL team. We have all 32 NFL teams, every single wide receiver number one, the main target on each team for each of these players. Basically, we're we'll ranking them just like we did with the tight ends, with the running backs, with the quarterbacks, from worst to best. You guys have been really, really enjoying this kind of content. Every single video has done really, really well. I do really appreciate it. Now we're going to be slowly up the two things, the wide receiver ones, twos, and threes, because that's what you said you guys wanted in the comments. So that's what we're going to be doing today and doing them separate. So starting off, we got the wide receiver number ones. Every single team has their wide receiver number one listed right here. And pretty much we are ranking them from worst to best. You guys seen the other videos. If you haven't yet, go see the other videos because they're also bangers. Before we get into the video, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and also comment down below are you if you are excited for part two and also if you agree or disagree with any of my takes. Let's get straight into it. And at number 32, the worst uh, number one wide receiver in the NFL is is maybe on the best team. It's the Chiefs, and it's Kadarius Toney. Kadarius Toney just isn't a wide receiver number one in this league. He's more of a wide receiver two or three. Yes, he got deep threat. Yes, he's got speed, but he's been injured. And overall, with how, you know, overall, he has not really shown up for the Chiefs. He was decent in their playoffs, but he's more, he's just more of a role wide receiver than the main guy. So it's pretty self explanatory. The Chiefs don't have a lot of options. Next up, at number 31, I'm going to go with the New York Giants receiver, Darius Slayton. You could say it's Sterling Shepard being the number one wide receiver. You could say it's Isaiah Hodgins, Wando Robinson. But I do think it's Darius Slayton. I think he's shown it. He's going to be healthy this year. We'll see how he does. But overall, he's just, again, he's he's the best player for them. But as a wide receiver on any of their team, he's a wide receiver number two or number three. I don't think he belongs as the main target there. But again, all these guys aren't bad wide receivers. They're just... They're not number ones at this, at the top, at right here. Those two have not number ones. Next up, at number 30, who could have been higher early in his career, but he's getting older, it's Robert Woods. Robert Woods on, on the Titans was actually one of the, uh, um, not the, yeah, the Titans, was actually a really, really good wide receiver, and also on the Rams. Uh, not the Titans, sorry, the Rams. He was a really, really good wide receiver, and then, you know, he's just getting older. He's just not as functional. Again, not a bad wide receiver, but for Houston, He's the worst option there. I would take, I I, I think he should, he's going to be the worst. He's going to be the 30th because he's getting older. He's just not as good. And he can still run routes pretty well. But again, like I said, at the bottom of this list, these, are just, these, these, these guys are not a number one wide receiver option. Next up, at number 29, I'm taking the per, Robert Woods' old, old, um, old team, and I'm going to be taking Traylon Burks. Traylon Burks is actually not that bad of a wide receiver. I really liked him in his rookie year. I don't think he's a terrible wide receiver. But again, you know, he was probably like the worst out of the first round rookie wide receivers like Garrett Wilson, Olave, and um, Drake London. Again, not horrible. I just, again, I don't think that he is a wide receiver number one. I think he's a wide receiver number two. He's more of a deep threat wide receiver number two than number one. But I do like this guy's potential. He's just a little too young, and we didn't see a full year out of him last year. Next up, at number 28, taking a big drop-off, isn't even the wide receiver, is now the wide receiver number one. It used to not be. It's going to be the Carolina Panthers' Adam Thielen. I do like Adam. I do. It's just, again, just like similar to Robert Woods, he's getting older in age, and he's still a touchdown machine. He can still run routes pretty well. He can still be clutch, but he's just getting older, and... This was more of just an option to have a substitute of getting rid of DJ Moore. And he's just not as good as he used to be. Again, someone to Robert Woods, he's just getting older and he's just a little bit slower. Next up, at number 28, uh, 27, I'm going to be putting a guy that just developed last year. I'm putting Christian Watson. He was amazing last year, especially at the end of the year. He was catching touchdowns. I think it was left, right, and center. He was great. I can't put him too highly, though, because we need to see a couple more years. And also, he's going to have a tough quarterback to throw to him and Joe and Love. We'll see how that works out with that chemistry together. But I do like Christian Watson. I just don't, I can't put him too highly because, again, I think it was more as like a slot wide receiver or wide receiver number two. I don't think of him as the main guy there, but he's going to have to be there. So we'll see how he does. But Christian Watson, for now, is going to slot in right at number seven. Uh, 27.
Next up now at number 26, I'm going to be putting Marquise Brown. Now the number one for the Arizona Cardinals because DeAndre Hopkins got released. I do like Marquise Brown. Obviously, it offers that speed threat. It was actually a really, really good watch number two for the Cardinals and actually had a really solid year last year. But again, it's one of those players where it's like maybe he's more of a wide receiver too. He's more, he's just a solid wide receiver and, a, and solid with the amount of talent that we're seeing in this list. Solid's just not enough, in my opinion, to really be put any higher. So for now, I'm going to be putting uh, Marquise Brown at number 26. We'll see how he does this year. He's going to get a lot more targets. He's going to have to be targeted a lot more. So we'll see how he does. Next up, at number 25, I am putting, again, a newly acquired wide receiver. It's Juju Smith-Schuster of the New England Patriots. Where is he? I can't find him right now. Juju? There he is. Yeah, so I actually don't mind Juju as a wide receiver, but again, he's just more of a solid wide receiver. He's a lot better in Pittsburgh. He went to the Chiefs. He was decent. He's definitely took a step down from his prime in, in, in Pittsburgh. He's definitely not as good anymore. Just doesn't look like he has much energy. Doesn't look like he wants to try as much. Still a great route runner. Still has good speed. Still can go up for balls in the air. He's decent. Again, though, with the amount of talent that's in this list, he can't be ranked any higher than 25, in my opinion. And to end this part of the tier out, the worst part of it, at number 24, I'm taking Jerry Judy. I actually do really, really like Jerry Judy. Let me find him first. Jerry, where are you, Jerry? Uh, there he is. I actually do really like Jerry Judy. I just don't think that the Broncos are really utilizing him to his full potential. If Russell Wilson can connect with Judy, then I think that he can be a top 20 wide receiver in the game. He's not getting the chances, and I, you can see that he's a speed demon. And honestly, I don't think it was a bad pick at where they picked him in the draft. I just think he needs time, and he needs a quarterback that will actually give him the ball consistently. And I'm hoping that this is his year for Jerry Judy because I actually do like him as a wide receiver. You might be wondering if Corlin Sutton is the number one. In my opinion, Jerry Judy is the number one there and Corlin Sutton is number two. But if you agree, it's also fine because they're kind of like sharing roles in my opinion. Next up, we are getting to the next tier, the upper echelon of the new tier, 17 to 23. This is where you're going to start getting into those uh, all-star kind of tight ends because uh, wide receivers. Because you, you, at this point, wide receiver ones, they should all be really good. But we're going to start off at number 23, and I'm putting the rookie last year, Drake London. Drake London had a really, really good rookie year. Again, can't rank him too highly because he is a rookie. You know, you haven't really seen him enough where you can overly rank him as, like, a top 10 wide receiver or top 15 wide receiver in the game because he did get injured last year, and he was on a team that really didn't give him many chances. But he actually was a really solid wide receiver year one. I mean, he had 800-plus yards. Caught some touchdowns and was a big key to the Atlanta Falcons offense when they needed him. I do think this guy's got potential. I think the spot that they picked him, now looking back on it, was a great pick from the Atlanta Falcons. This dude's going to be special. You just can't overhype him yet. It's been only one year. He needs to stay healthy as well. Next up, at number 22, I'm taking another newly acquired receiver. It's Odell Beckham for the Baltimore Ravens. I do like OBJ. He's just not on his prime anymore. It's simple as that. He was decent for the Rams. Then he sat out this whole year with injuries and just wanting to leave, but he didn't really have a spot, and now he's going to be in Baltimore Raven. I do think he's going to be decent. I think Lamar's going to want to target him, but he hasn't really played a great full season in three, four years, so you can't rate him too highly. You can't overly value him because of how good you think he's going to do this year, because we don't know that yet, so I'm going to have him at a safe spot, put him at number 22. I think he's definitely going to go up higher on this list near the end of the year. So I do think that, I just think Lamar's going to target him a lot. And whether what he does with it is up to him. But I still think he's a good wide receiver. Next up, at number 21, I'm taking Deontay Johnson. Yes, it was a big step back from Deontay Johnson last year. Mainly it was just the drop balls. I mean, he is really, really good at getting separation for wide receivers and really good at route running. He just dropped a lot of balls last year, and he wasn't as consistent as he was the year prior. Maybe that's just because Kenny Pickett to Big Ben is a bit of a difference. He has to get used to the new quarterback. I understand that. But also, he still didn't have the greatest year. So, I'm again, I don't mean to sound mean. I just can't overrate him until I can see that him and Kenny can work well together. But I think he's one of the more underrated wide receivers in the game. He's just a fantastic route runner, has good speed, and regularly has good hands. Next up, at number 20, I am putting Michael Pittman of the Indianapolis Colts. This might be the, the, the most underrated uh, underrated wide receiver in all of football. 
I really do like him. I just think he hasn't gotten the chances. First of all, he can never get a quarterback for more than a year. And he's still putting up numbers over 1,000 yards and getting over 100 catches. This dude is a special freak. I mean, he's tall. He can go up and get a ball. And he can also route run. And he has good speed for that tall of a person. He just isn't being utilized. And not even not being utilized. He hasn't had a quarterback that's actually really been good for him. Even Matt Ryan, who we thought was going to be good last year, was ended up being pretty terrible. So I'm going to put him at 20 right now. But I do hope that he can get a quarterback. Hopefully, Anthony Richardson can really help him out and make him into a top 15 wide receiver next year. Next up, at number 19, I'm taking the guy that was just suspended. Not just suspended. It's coming off the suspension, and that is Calvin Ridley. I do like Calvin Ridley. I'm going to give him a chance. I'm putting him quite high for a guy that just got suspended. But I do have a lot of confidence in that he's going to come back to his old form in Atlanta. And having a great quarterback like Trevor next to him, and I believe he is the wide receiver one. Some people will say Christian Kirk. Some people can say Zay Jones. But in my opinion, it's Calvin Ridley. I think he'll, that's what he's going to be meant to be. I think uh, Trevor Lawrence is going to light him up. And I think he's going to go and have a 1K yard season. Be back to his old form. I have a lot of confidence in Calvin Ridley. He slots in at 19. Next up, at number 18, I'm going to be putting Keenan Allen. Again, just a guy like Michael Pittman or Deontay Johnson. Uh, not, not Michael Pittman, Deontay Johnson. It's a big drop up from Keenan Allen. He's, again, similarly to Robert Woods and Adam Thielen. He's just getting older. He isn't able to function. And also, he's getting injured a lot. And there's some games where he'll go out and get seven wrecks for 100 yards and a touchdown. There's other games where he'll go for two wrecks for 20 yards. Kind of inconsistent and just isn't back to his old form. I still have confidence in the guy. I mean, he's ranked as a pretty solid wide receiver. Again, he is a great wide receiver. There's just so many good wide receivers in this game. And he's on the older end. I'm going to be slotting him in at number 18. And to finish off this category, at number 17, I'm putting Debo Samuel. I know you might be mad at me. I'm not being biased here. This is the Niners wide receiver. I'm a Niners fan, so I'm not going to be biased here. Debo was horrible last year. He was not good. Ayuk was the main wide receiver there. I'm still going to classify Debo as the wide receiver number one because I think that's what his role is. But Ayuk had a better wide receiver year than him last year. I mean, he caught for only 600 yards. And I know he was injured for a lot of the year. But it reminded me at the start of his career, he had that amazing year last year. Not last year, like two years ago. And then he just, again, last year, he just got riddled with injuries. And he just wasn't as consistent with Brock Purdy. It seemed like Brock Purdy really wanted to throw to Ayuk. Again, I'm being a Niners fan. A lot of people rank him higher, but I'm actually going to be unbiased here and rank him at 17, which might be a lot of people. But I'm being honest, when I watched him play, he just wasn't that good. And now we're going up into these are where you get into like the superstar type wide receivers. And at number 16, I am putting another rookie. And we're going to go back-to-back rookies here. And this is going to be Garrett Wilson. And we might as well just say that we're doing back to back rookies. And number 15, I'm putting Chris Olave. Garrett Wilson had an amazing rookie year. Obviously, it was Offensive Rookie of the Year. There's a reason why I'm putting Olave a little bit higher, though. I think Olave is going to have a better year this year. He also had a better year last year, in my opinion. I just think Garrett Wilson won because he was not on a good team and he was producing really, really good numbers. And I'm fine with Garrett Wilson winning. I think he was a fantastic talent. I just think overall, Olave had the better year. But I'm not mad about either of them being the pick. I think they're both fantastic wide receivers. Uh, both, honestly, positives for both of them. Uh, for Garrett Wilson, you're going to have Aaron Rodgers thrown to you, and there's not a lot of other wide receiver talent around him. So he's going to get the majority of the catch, and I, I think he's going to break out. And Olave, you get Derek Carr throw to you. He's a pass first quarterback, and you are the wide receiver number one there. So in my opinion, Olave is going to have all the potential in the world to really go up and be a, a, a top 10 possible quarterback, a uh, wide receiver, in uh, going into next year. So right now, Garrett Wilson at 16. And then Olave at 15. I like the situation. We have to see a little more from them. It's their rookie year. You can't rank them too highly, but they were fantastic the rookie year. Next up, at number 14, I am putting DJ Moore. Kind of similar to that guy like Debo. He really did not have a great year last year. I do have potential in him, though. I think the reason why he didn't have that good of a year because he didn't really have a quarterback that was actually functional for his team. So that's my reasoning. I don't care if he didn't have the greatest year last year. I don't care if he dropped a lot of balls. I don't care if he wasn't up to his standards. I think in Chicago, he's going to get more of a chance. And I think he's going to go back to his top 10 wide receiver self, where he was a couple of years ago. It was a bad year last year, and I understand that. I still have confidence in him. He's going to slide in number 14. Maybe it's a little bit high, but I like him. And I think that he's going to have a bounce back year this year. Next up, at number 13, I'm putting Amari Cooper. I don't think people realize actually that Amari Cooper is still a really solid wide receiver. 
kind of similar to Keenan Allen where he's getting a little bit older, but he's still a good wide receiver. I do think that he's a solid wide receiver. I don't think he's getting the amount of attention he's going to get. I think Deshaun Watson's going to be able to hook up with him uh, a lot throughout the season and just give him dimes, hopefully as long as Deshaun gets back to his old uh, Houston Texans form. But I do like Amari Cooper. I think he's a good wide receiver. I Again, I think he kind of gets overshadowed with like Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt and D- Deshaun Watson. I feel like people don't realize that this, this guy is still really good and he picked another 1,000-yard season last year. So he's definitely going to be He's definitely a good wide receiver. I think people are underrating him, saying that he's just he's aged. He should be at, he's he's he should be a, just a solid wide receiver anymore. But which I think is wrong. I think he's still an all star caliber wide receiver. Next up at number twelve, I'm putting a freak of nature, DK Metcalf. Great year from DK. He definitely showed why he was picked so highly. He definitely showed why he is a great wide receiver in the game. I mean, this dude is the definition of a freak of nature. Not only is he 6'7", he's not 6'7", I'm just, I'm exaggerating, but he's as tall as a a building, a skyscraper, but he also has hands like DeAndre Hawkins in his prime, and it's, it's in, uh, unreal, and he's also got the speed of a cheetah. It's ridiculous. This dude is a full package. The only thing I don't like about him, his route running is not great, but... All jokes aside, this dude is ridiculous. He's one of the best in the game, and he had a really good year last year. And next up, just missing out on the top 10, I am putting scary Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin might be one of the most consistent wide receivers in the game of NFL. Uh, always 1,000 yards every single season. Always the most consistent in on his team. And even with as bad of a quarterback as Ryan Fitzpatrick or... Um, Taylor Heineke or Carson Wentz, he's still able to get it done. That just shows you how good of a wide receiver he is. I really think he can enter the top 10 if he can actually have a good quarterback, but we just don't know, honestly. And it's unfortunate to see him kind of similar to Michael Pittman. He's not getting the opportunity, but I think he's still a fantastic wide receiver. He's also at number 11. Now we're entering the top 10 wide receiver number ones, and at number 10, I'm going to be putting C.D. Lamb. This guy is amazing. One of the best route runners. Also has the most speed. I like him. Maybe I'm underrating him. I I, I just I the these guys, in my opinion, these other nine that I'm mentioning are just a little bit better than him. But I do really like C D Lamb. I'm not saying that I'm 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 saying that he's bad. He's I, he's this high. He's amazing. It's just I I just there's guys that I would put above him. There's not really a lot of flaws in this game. I guess he's kinda of small, but he's also got an insane amount of speed, so for Dallas, he's going to have another great year this year. I expect at least. He's still sitting at number 10. Next up, at number 9, I'm going to be putting Amon Ross St. Brown. A lot of people might have CeeDee Lamb above Amon Ross, and I'm not really going to complain. I just really like Amon Ross St. Brown. I mean, what a year he had with Jared Goff. They two have great chemistry together. I, I expect that to continue. Great hands, can run routes amazingly, and has good speed. Just a guy that thinks the game well. Kind of similar like a Cooper Cub. A guy that doesn't have anything that stands out. But he knows exactly how to get in positions where he can catch the ball and go down the field for 10 yards. So Amonra slots in, slots in at number 9. I really do like him. And I think he's going to have another fantastic year in Detroit. Next up at number 8, we have Mr. Consistent Mike Evans. It's always a 1,000-yard guy. Has been it for his whole career. Not much to talk about here. The most consistent wide receiver. The only thing is I think he's going to have a bit of a down year this year because he has Baker Mayfield throwing to him. But maybe he'll just somehow screech out 1,000 yards again. But we're talking about one of the most consistent wide receivers in the NFL. We're talking about a future Hall of Famer. You got to think of Mike Evans. Uh, tall, can run decent routes, and can go up and get balls out of the air. So I'm playing at number eight, Mike Evans. At number seven, I'm putting A.J. Brown. I do like A.J. Brown a ton. He had a breakout year in Philadelphia. Not saying that he was bad in, tight, in Tennessee. I feel like people are starting to like uh, hate on A.J. Brown in Tennessee. And then he went to uh, Philadelphia, and he shut all those fans up. He was amazing last year for the Eagles, and I feel like, you know, Devontae Smith maybe took away some of his yardage, but he still had a career year, over 1,000 yards, over 10 touchdowns, and and was Jalen Hurts' favorite target, in my opinion. He was amazing. He's going to slot at number seven, and I really do like the way that he plays. Next up, at number six, I'm going to be putting Cooper Cup. A bit of a fall off for Cooper Cup. He just wasn't healthy this year. Neither was the entire Rams offense. And without Matthew Stafford, he was not that good. Not saying it's his fault that he's on top six 
six it was still amazing. It's just he fell out of top five because he didn't have the greatest year last year. Fantastic runner though, a uh, great route runner, and just like I said about Amon Ra, he just finds ways to get open, and nothing screams up the board about talent, but he gets he gets it done. Cooper Cup's gonna slot in at number six. Now we're getting to the top five. At number five, I'm gonna be putting Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase is great. People sometimes uh, don't like Jamar Chase. I really, really do like Jamar Chase. Really athletic, has a ton of speed, can run insanely good routes, can make toe catches, and Joe Burrow as a quarterback really helps his case out because he's just throwing him dimes. The two LSU bros getting back together, you love to see it, and the chemistry there is amazing. And without a doubt, Jamar Chase is a top five wide receiver in the game. He's just, he's something different that we've seen apart from these other four guys. It's like, it's hard to explain. He's just that good. Next up at number four, I'm putting Stefan Diggs. The only reason why I'm putting Stefan above um, Jamar Chase is just because of his longevity and his consistency. If Jamar Chase can keep that up, he will, without a doubt, take over Stefan Diggs. But Stefan Diggs has been really, really good for the Bills. I mean, he's gotten better when he went to Buffalo. There's a lot of things going around with him. If he's going to be released or not, it seems like he's got that all figured out that he's going to stay with the Bills. But yeah, he's been a great quarterback with the Bills. Him and Josh Allen work really, really well together. And he seems to just get better as age comes. Next up, at number three, I'm putting Devontae Adams. Might even be a little bit too low, honestly, because this guy was the best wide receiver in the NFL three years ago, and he's still been amazing. He's just, again, getting a little bit older. And also, his quarterback just isn't as good anymore. I think he's going to have a little bit more of a down year this year because he has Jimmy behind the dish and, you know, going from Aaron to Derek to Jimmy. It's just slowly decreasing. So I do think he's going to have a bit of a down year, but he's still an amazing quarterback. He's definitely going to get over 1,000 yards, but he's he might drop out a little bit. That's why he's out of top three, out of top two. But Devontae is still amazing. I mean, we're talking about maybe the great one of the great wide receivers of all time. In his prime, he's amazing. He's still amazing now. He's a fantastic talent. Next up at number two, we got the Cheetah, Tyree Kill. Oh, I don't know what happened there. The speed, that's all you can say. The speed of Tyreek Kill is something that we've never seen before. And honestly, there's a lot of worries about him going to Miami and how that would affect his game. He just, he it didn't affect the game. In fact, he got better from that. He got even better from that. Uh, first of all, Tua was throwing him dimes all season, so good job to Tua there. But also, even with Tua's out, he was still being great. There was games where he'd average 200 yards and three touchdowns. It's ridiculous. And he's left in at number two because number one is just more consistent, doesn't get injured as much, and it's just overall a better wide receiver. And that's why at number one, I have Justin Jefferson. He's coming out of my number one wide receiver. He might break 2,000 yards next year. He's just that good. Again, a tall, lanky dude that can just catch and... Um, route running exceptionally well. Also, one of the best dances. I know that's not part of it, but the gritty is exceptional. And overall, you ain't stopping him when he's in full effect, when he's sprinting. And if it's a jump ball, he's 100% going to win that. 99%. And that's me ranking every single wide receiver number one from worst to best. I'd love to see in the comments down below what, if you agree or disagree with any of my takes. I guess my most outlandish take would be putting Amonra ahead of CD, but I don't really know, or maybe putting OBJ that low, we just haven't really seen him, but to recap the list, at number 32, we have Kadarius Tony at 31, Darius Slayton at 30, Robert Woods, 29, Traylon Burks, 28, Adam Thielen, 27, Christian Watson, 26, Marquise Brown, 25, Juju Smith-Schuster, 24, Jerry Judy, 23, Drake London, 22, OBJ, 21, Deontay Johnson, 20, Michael Pittman, 19, Calvin Ridley, 18, Keenan Allen, 17, Debo Samuel, uh, 16, Garrett Wilson, 15, Chris Olave, 14, DJ Moore, 13, Amari Cooper, 12, DK Metcalf, 11, Terry McLaurin, 10, CD Lamb, 9, Amon R. St. Brown, 8, Mike Evans, 7, AJ Brown, 6, Cooper Cup, 5, Jamar Chase, 4, Stephon Diggs, 3, Devontae Adams, 2, Tyreek Kill, and 1, Justin Jefferson. And that will do my video. Please make sure you really like on the video, subscribe to the channel, because we are posting daily, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace!